Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Nipunika Shahid with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi assures that every success of India will help the world to succeed and Atmanirbhar Bharat mission is fully committed to global good and global supply chain. Health Minister Harshvardhan says India flattens COVID-19 curve as 146 districts have no new cases since last seven days. Country's COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 96.94%. Budget session of parliament to begin tomorrow. And Uttar Pradesh are judged the best tableau among the 32 tableau that participated in Republic Day Parade. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain do gaz ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said in the midst of numerous doubts, India took a proactive public participation approach and developed a COVID-specific health infrastructure and trained its resources to fight COVID. Addressing the World Economic Forum's Davos Dialogue via video conferencing this evening, Mr. Modi said that India is successfully conducting the world's largest vaccination drive as well. He said when the pandemic began, someone had even predicted that 700 to 800 million would be infected and over 2 million Indians would perish. He pointed out that looking at the condition of countries with better health infrastructure, the world was right in worrying about India. However, India took a proactive public participation approach and developed a COVID-specific health infrastructure and trained its resources to fight COVID. He said technology was fully used for testing and tracking. भारत ने खुद पर निराशा को हावी नहीं होने दिया भारत प्रोएक्टिव पब्लिक पार्टिसिपेशन के अप्रोच के साथ आगे बढ़ता रहा हमने कोविड स्पेसिफिक हेल्थ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलप करने पर जोर लगाया हमने अपने ह्यूमन रिसोर्सेज को कोरोना से लड़ने के लिए ट्रेन किया टेस्टिंग और ट्रैकिंग इसके लिए टेक्नोलॉजी का भरपूर इस्तेमाल किया इस लड़ाई में भारत के प्रत्येक व्यक्ति ने धैर्य के साथ अपने कर्तव्यों का पालन किया कोरोना के खिलाफ लड़ाई को एक जन आंदोलन में बदल दिया आज भारत दुनिया के उन देशों में से हैं जो अपने ज्यादा से ज्यादा नागरिकों का जीवन बचाने में सफल रहा है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड इंडिया इज नॉट ओनली फुलफिलिंग इट्स ओन नीड्स ऑफ पीपीई किट्स एंड मास्क बट ऑल्सो एक्सपोर्टिंग एंड हेल्पिंग अदर कंट्रीज कोरोना शुरू होने के समय मास्क पीपीई किट टेस्ट किल हम बाहर से मंगाते थे आज हम न सिर्फ अपनी घरेलू जरूरतें पूरी कर रहे हैं बल्कि इन्हें अन्य देशों में भेजकर वहां के नागरिकों की सेवा भी कर रहे हैं और आज भारत ही है जिसने दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा कोरोना वैक्सीनेशन प्रोग्राम भी शुरू किया है He said India has vaccinated over 2 million health workers in record time. In the next few months, India would complete its target of vaccinating 300 million old people and people with comorbidities. Bharat ki speed ka andaja aap isi se laga sakte hain ki sirf 12 din mein, 12 days mein, Bharat ne apne 2.3 million se jyada health workers ko vaccinate kar chuka hai. अगले कुछ महीनों में हम अपने करीब 300 मिलियन बुजुर्ग और कोमोर्बिडिटी वाले मरीजों के वैक्सीनेशन का टारगेट पूरा कर लेंगे। मिस्टर मोदी सेड इंडिया हैज आल्सो शोन द वर्ल्ड हाउ ट्रेडिशनल मेडिसिन लाइक आयुर्वेद कैन हेल्प इन इम्प्रूविंग इम्यूनिटी। he further stated that today India is sending its vaccine to several countries and is helping in developing the infrastructure for successful vaccination, thus saving lives of citizens of other countries. भारत की ट्रेडिशनल मेडिसिन आयुर्वेद कैसे इम्यूनिटी बढ़ाने में सहायक है हमने दुनिया को इस बारे में गाइड भी किया आज भारत कोविड की वैक्सीन दुनिया के अनेक देशों में भेजकर वहां पर वैक्सीनेशन से जुड़े इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को तैयार करके दूसरे देशों के नागरिकों का भी जीवन बचा रहे हैं और ये सुनकर डब्ल्यू में सभी को तसल्ली होगी कि अभी तो सिर्फ दो मेड इन इंडिया कोरोना वैक्सीन दुनिया में आई है आने वाले समय में कई और वैक्सीन भारत से बनकर के आने वाली है 
The Prime Minister said India's upcoming vaccines will help other countries at a swifter pace to fight the pandemic. He said even on the economic front, the situation is set to change in the post-COVID era. He added that India continued its economic activities during COVID with infrastructure work worth trillions of rupees providing employment. He said India stressed on saving every single life and is now walking ahead to become Atmanirbhar. दुनिया के अर्थ जगत को ये भरोसा भी दिला रहा हूं कि आर्थिक मोर्चे पर भी स्थितियां अब तेजी से बदलेगी कोरोना के समय में भी भारत ने इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के ट्रिलियंस ऑफ रुपीस के प्रोजेक्ट शुरू करके एम्प्लॉयमेंट के लिए विशेष स्कीम्स चलाकर इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी को बनाए रखा था तब हमने एक एक जीवन को बचाने पर जोर दिया he said 1.3 billion people of india have aadhar which is connected to their accounts in december last year upi has seen transactions worth 4 trillion rupees mr modi said people in the banking sector know how countries worldwide are trying to replicate the upi system developed by india he also said india is starting a new initiative to provide a unique health id to 1.3 billion citizens for easy access of healthcare he also assured that every success of india will help the world to succeed and atmanirbhar bharat mission is fully committed to global good and global supply chain aaj hum jo atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan chala rahe hain wo bhi global good aur global supply chain ke prati puri tarah committed hai bharat ke paas global supply chain ko mazboot karne ke liye capacity bhi hai capability bhi hai और सबसे बड़ी बात रिलायबिलिटी भी है भारत के पास आज बहुत बड़ा कंज्यूमर बेज है और उसका जितना विस्तार होगा उतना ही ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी को लाभ होगा हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर मिनिस्टर डॉक्टर हर्षवर्धन चेयर द ट्वेंटी थर्ड मीटिंग ऑफ द हाई लेवल ग्रुप ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स ऑन कोविड नाइन्टीन बाय वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंस टूडे He said that less than 12000 cases were reported in the last 24 hours and the active case load has reduced to just 1.73 lakhs. Dr Harshvardhan said India has flattened its COVID-19 curve and 146 districts have no new cases since last 7 days. He added that 18 districts have no new cases since 14 days, 6 districts since 21 days and 21 districts since the last 28 days. our recovery rate is almost touching 97% today morning to be precise it is 96.93% and our fatality rate continues to be the lowest in the whole world so almost 1.44% last 24 hours we had 11660 cases in the whole country This has been achieved with proactive testing of which more than 19.5 crore have been conducted so far. The current testing capacity rests at 12 lakhs per day. We all know that we were privileged to have been given two indigenous vaccines by our scientists and they are already being given to our people in the country and right now to begin with starting with health workers and then of course the frontline workers till today morning In fact yesterday evening we have completed 42674 sessions of vaccination all over the country A total of over 23 lakh 55000 people have been administered COVID-19 vaccines in the country so far Nearly 3 lakh 25000 people were vaccinated during the last 24 hours Meanwhile the country's covid-19 recovery rate reached 96.94% with a total recovery of more than 14000 patients in the last 24 hours. The health ministry said that more than 1 crore 3 lakh 73000 patients have already recovered from this disease. The number of covid-19 active cases is on a continuously declining trajectory in the country. The government today said India is the fastest country to reach 1 million vaccinations in the first 6 days. Briefing media in New Delhi this evening, Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan said the United States achieved this feat in 10 days, Spain in 12 days, Israel in 14, UK in 18 days, Italy in 19 and Germany in 20 days. 
He said a total of over 25 lakh 7,000 people have been administered COVID-19 vaccines in the country so far. Mr. Bhushan said, on the other hand, India's daily COVID cases are continuously declining. He said only Kerala and Maharashtra still have more than 40,000 cases, which contribute to 67% of the total cases. अभी भी दो राज्य ऐसे हैं जहां की देश के कुल एक्टिव केसेस का 67 प्रतिशत 67 परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल एक्टिव केसेस ऑफ कोविड इन द कंट्री इज इन केरला एंड महाराष्ट्र देन वी हैव यूपी कर्नाटका वेस्ट बंगाल एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द कंट्री the government said more than 28 lakh beneficiaries have received the vaccination under the countrywide COVID-19 vaccination exercise. The Union Health Ministry said in the last 24 hours nearly 5 lakh people were vaccinated across 9,994 sessions. India has gifted over 55 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccines to its neighbours and extended neighbourhood since the 20th of January this year. This includes 1.5 lakh doses to Bhutan, 1 lakh to the Maldives, 10 lakh to Nepal, 20 lakh to Bangladesh, 15 lakh to Myanmar, 1 lakh to Mauritius, 50,000 to Seychelles, 5 lakh to Sri Lanka and 1 lakh to Bahrain. Briefing media this evening, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Anurag Srivastav said, these supplies are based on requests from these countries. Over the next few days, India plans to gift further quantities of 1 lakh doses to Oman, 5 lakh to CARICOM countries, 2 lakh to Nicaragua and 2 lakh to Pacific Island states. Mr. Srivastav said there is interest in many countries in accessing vaccines from India, in line with the Prime Minister's announcement that India sees international cooperation in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic as its duty. The country has played the role of the first responder in the neighbourhood, as well as undertaken supplies to countries beyond. Commercial exports have taken place to Brazil, Morocco and Bangladesh. Further supplies on a commercial basis are likely to take place to Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Canada, Mongolia and other countries. Further, we are going to supply 1 crore doses to Africa and 10 lakh doses to UN health workers under Gavi's COVAX facility. Mr. Srivastav said India's external supplies, whether as gifts or on a commercial basis, are based on domestic availability, licensing issues and regulatory approvals in the countries concerned. He said India will continue to supply vaccines to partner countries over the coming weeks and months in a phased manner. He added that decisions on these supplies will be calibrated against the requirements of the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine at home. The World Health Organization WHO team of 13 experts has left the quarantine today to begin their fieldwork and research on origins of COVID-19 in Wuhan, two weeks after arriving in the Chinese city where the virus emerged in late 2019. Team's arrival was delayed due to concerns over access and terms of reference of research which saw bickering between US and China. Over the past two weeks, the team has been interacting with each other and Chinese scientists through video calls. The WHO has tried to manage the expectations from the investigation, stressing that it is not about apportioning blame, but about understanding how the virus made the jump to humans and finding ways to prevent the emergence of similar pathogens. Several countries, most vocally the United States and Australia, have accused Beijing of downplaying the outbreak's severity during its early stages. WHO was also severely criticized by the then U.S. President Donald Trump for behaving pro-China. You are listening to the Evening News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi assures that every success of India will help the world to succeed and Atmanirbhar Bharat mission is fully committed to global good and global supply chain. Health Minister Harshwardhan says India flattens COVID-19 curve as 146 districts have no new cases since last seven days. Country's COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 96.94%, budget session of parliament to begin tomorrow, and Uttar Pradesh judged the best tableau among the 32 tableau that participated in the Republic Day Parade. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. <laughs>
All India Radio presents World News. News and views from across the globe. What happened and what is up next? The newsmakers and the highlights of the day. From 10.30 to 11 p.m. every night on 100.1 FM All India Radio. Welcome back to the evening news. Lauding the role of the National Cadet Corps, NCC, in the service of the nation, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that from floods to any other natural disasters, the cadets have helped people during calamities. Addressing the NCC rally in New Delhi today, he said during the COVID-19 period, lakhs of cadets worked with the administration and society across the country. Mr. Modi said around 1 lakh NCC cadets are being trained by the Army, Navy and Air Force for a new responsibility in nearly 175 districts in the coastal and border areas of the country. The budget session of Parliament will begin from tomorrow. The session will begin with the address of President Ramnath Kovind to the joint sitting of both Houses of Parliament. The Union Budget 2021-22 will be presented on the 1st of next month. This will be the first budget in the history of India which will be presented in paperless form. In view of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Rajya Sabha from, will function from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and the Lok Sabha from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. The first part of the session, which will have 12 sittings, will conclude on the 15th of February. The second part of the budget session will begin on the 8th of March and will conclude on the 8th of April and will have 21 sittings. The government has convened an all-party meeting on Saturday to seek the support of political parties to ensure smooth conduct of business in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. Delhi Police Special Cell is investigating a larger conspiracy and criminal designs behind the unfortunate events that happened during Farmers Tractor Rally on the 26th of January. In a statement, the police said a preliminary assessment suggests that there was preconceived and well-coordinated plan to break the agreement reached between the Delhi police and leaders of farmers' organizations. A criminal case has been registered and is being investigated under provisions of Unlawful Activities Prevention Act and sections of IPC dealing with sedition. Delhi police said the role and conduct of organizations and individuals based in India as well as those out of the country is being probed. Uttar Pradesh was adjudged the best tableau among the 32 tableau that participated in the Republic Day Parade this year. The tableau of Uttar Pradesh was based on the theme Ayodhya, cultural heritage of Uttar Pradesh. Tableau of Tripura was adjudged the second best, which depicted promotion of eco-friendly tradition for achieving self-reliance in socio-economic parameters. Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Kiran Rijiju today gave away awards and prizes to participants. Education Minister Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishang today said that the CBSE exam date sheet of 10th and 12th class will be announced on 2nd February. Interacting with presidents and secretaries of CBSE Sahodaya School complexes through video conference, Mr. Pokhriyal said computerized affiliation system to be based on data analytics and self-disclosure of schools. The minister said the records of all CBSE students who enrolled in the span of last 45 years will be digitized. This will help citizens who enrolled after 1975 to get certificates easily. He said CBSE will train 10 lakh teachers in the coming year to meet the goals of National Education Policy 2020. Beating retreat ceremony, which marks the culmination of the four-day-long Republic Day celebrations, will be held at the historic Vijay Chowk in New Delhi tomorrow. Defence Ministry said this year Indian tunes will be the flavour of the ceremony, as many as 26 performances will enthrall the spectators with captivating and foot-tapping music of the bands from the Army, Navy, Air Force and Central Armed Police Forces, CAPF. The entry band will be massed band with Swarnim Vijay theme. It will be special new composition to commemorate 50 years of victory of India in the 1971 war against Pakistan. This will be followed by pipes and drums band, CAPF bands, Air Force band, Naval band, Army Mill band and massed bands. The event will come to a close with the ever popular tune of Sare Jahan Se Achha. The ministry said this year 15 military bands and 15 pipes and drums bands from regimental centers and battalions are participating in beating the retreat ceremony. 
Besides, one each of Indian Navy and Indian Air Force Band will also form part of the event. Beating retreat is a centuries-old military tradition dating from the days when troops disengaged from battle at sunset. As soon as the buglers sounded the retreat, the troops ceased fighting, sheathed their arms and withdrew from the battlefield. India today said Pakistan has failed to create an environment under which the allegations against Kulbhushan Jadhav can be seriously and effectively challenged. Replying to a media query this evening, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Anurag Srivastav said, Pakistan needs to implement the ICJ judgment in letter and spirit, and this includes provision of all relevant documents to the case, as well as providing unconditional, unhindered and unimpeded consular access to Mr. Jadhav. On acquittal of Omar Saeed, Mr. Shavasta pointed at the very low conviction rate in Pakistan when it comes to sentencing of terror accused. He said this case truly demonstrates Pakistan's intent on taking action on the terror front. He called it a travesty of justice not to find Omar Saeed guilty of any charges in the heinous act of terror. He said India's position on Pakistan taking sustained, verifiable, credible and irreversible action against terrorism and terrorist funding emanating from all territory under its control remains unchanged. Replying to a query on activities of Khalistani elements, the spokesperson said India is closely engaged with the relevant foreign governments to apprise them of the threats posed and convey concerns as well and to seek their interventions. He said the safety and security of the Indian diplomatic premises and personnel is the responsibility of the host government. Pakistan's Supreme Court today ordered the release of a militant convicted of beheading U.S. journalist Daniel Pearl. Pearl, 38, was kidnapped when he was investigating Islamist militants in Karachi after the September 11, 2001 attacks on the United States. Later, Mr. Pearl was beheaded and a video of his beheading grabbed headlines around the world. Ahmad Umar Said Sheikh, who was the main suspect in the 2002 kidnapping and murder of Pearl, has been acquitted by a panel of three judges. A Pakistani high court last year commuted the death penalty of the British-born Sheikh into life sentence and acquitted three other co-accused persons citing lack of evidence. India and Japan held the fifth joint meeting of the India-Japan Act East Forum in New Delhi today. The meeting was co-chaired by Foreign Secretary Harshvardhan Shringla and Ambassador of Japan to India, Suzuki Satoshi. The Act East Forum reviewed progress of ongoing projects in the northeastern region of India in various areas including connectivity, hydropower, sustainable development, harnessing of water resources and skill development. They discussed several ongoing new projects under India-Japan bilateral cooperation and also exchanged views on cooperation in new areas such as healthcare, agro-industries and SMEs, bamboo value chain development, smart city, tourism and people-to-people -people exchanges. Foreign Secretary and the Japanese Ambassador appreciated the role played by the Act East Forum since its establishment in 2017 in streamlining India-Japan bilateral cooperation for the modernization of the northeastern region. Act East Forum provides a platform for India-Japan collaboration in the northeastern region under India's Act East policy and Japan's vision for a free and open Indo-Pacific. India continues to remain engaged at all levels as a new U.S. administration takes shape to work together to further strengthen comprehensive global strategic partnership. Replying to a media query today, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Anurag Srivastav said that Prime Minister Narendra Modi had congratulated U.S. President Joe Biden on his election on the 8th of November. They had a telephone call on the 17th of November where they exchanged views on working together on shared priorities and global challenges. India and Bangladesh will be holding the next round of Foreign Office consultations in New Delhi tomorrow. The Indian side will be led by Foreign Secretary Harshwardhan Shringla and the Bangladesh side will be led by Ambassador Masood bin Momen, Foreign Secretary of Bangladesh. The Foreign Office consultations will review the entire gamut of bilateral relations, including cooperation in the wake of COVID-19, border management and security, trade and investment, connectivity, energy, water resources, development partnership and regional and multilateral issues.
Benchmark domestic stocks today declined more than 1%. The Sensex and Nifty logged losses amid negative global queues. The BSE Sensex closed below the 47,000 mark, while the NSE Nifty settled near 13,800 level. A report from the business world. The Sensex plunged 536 points or 1.13% down at 46,874. The NSE Nifty also declined 150 points or 1.07% to trade at 13,818. The broader market at BSC also fell but outperformed the Sensex. The BSC mid-cap index ended 0.46% down and the BSC small cap index slipped 0.45%. In the forex market, the rupee weakened 12 paise to 73 rupees and 4 paise against the US dollar. And in intraday trade, Brent crude prices were trading around $55.80 per barrel, while WTI crude prices were around $52.80 per barrel. Rajesh Lake for AIR News. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital is likely to experience cold wave. The temperature will hover between 4 and 21 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature will be around 15 degrees Celsius, while the maximum is expected to be around 30 degrees. Chennai will witness mainly clear sky. The temperature will vary between 22 and 31 degrees Celsius. In Kolkata, there will be fog or mist in the morning and partly cloudy sky later. The city will observe a minimum of around 14 degrees Celsius and a maximum of around 25 degrees. In Srinagar, there will be mainly clear sky. The temperature will hover between minus 7 and 7 degrees Celsius. In Jammu, the minimum temperature will be around 6 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 21 degrees. Leh will have a minimum temperature of minus 15 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be 1 degree. In Gilgit, the temperature will hover between minus 6 and 12 degrees Celsius. In Muzaffarabad, the temperature will hover between 3 and 19 degrees Celsius. Dehradun will observe a minimum temperature of around 5 degrees Celsius and a maximum of around 21 degrees. The city will have fog in the morning and mainly clear sky later. Chandigarh will have fog in the morning and mainly clear sky later. The temperature is likely to hover between 5 and 22 degrees Celsius. In Hyderabad, the minimum temperature will be around 18 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be 31 degrees. The city will witness fog in the morning and partly cloudy sky later. Ahmedabad will have clear sky. The minimum temperature will be around 13 degrees Celsius, while maximum will be around 25 degrees. Patna will have fog in the morning and mainly clear sky later. The temperature will move between 8 and 18 degrees Celsius. And in Guwahati, there will be generally cloudy sky with possibility of development of thunder or lightning. The minimum temperature will be around 14 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 23 degrees. In some more news, in Kerala, the Alapura bypass, which has been under construction for the past 30 years, has been opened for public today. Union Minister for Road, Transport and Highways, Nitin Gadkari, and Chief Minister Pinarai Vision inaugurated the bypass today. Kerala Governor Arif Mohammad Khan, V.K. Singh, Union Minister of State for Road, Transport and Highways, V. Murli Dharan, Union Minister of State for External Affairs and Parliamentary Affairs, were among those present. The bypass is 6.8 kilometers long and extends from Kalarkodu to Kamadi on National Highway 66. Out of this, 4.8 kilometers, including the approach road, is an elevated highway. The 3.2 kilometer long elevated highway is the first to be built over sea. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi assures that every success of India will help the world to succeed and Atmanirbhar Bharat mission is fully committed to global good and global supply chain. Health Minister Harshwardhan says India flattens COVID-19 curve as 146 districts have no new cases since last seven days. Country's COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 96.94%. Budget session of Parliament to begin tomorrow. And Uttar Pradesh had judged the best tableau among the 32 tableau that participated in the Republic Day Parade. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.